Automation and Intelligence for the Future. This is AI Expert Africa, and we're here speaking to David Goldsmith. David, not only an author of Paid to Think, but also the founder and CEO of Ecosystems AI. Amazing career. Can you tell us a little more? Oh, about the career as the ecosystems? Okay, uh, a very short, brief history, and I'm going to do it in, a, let's call it New York time, so okay. that we can catch up quickly. I went to school pre-med, organic chemistry, physics, calculus. I decided my senior year in university not going to do that, even though I had done three surgical cases. And I decided to switch careers, and I started my first business while I was in uni. And my partner happened to have been the first person in the United States ever to get an entrepreneurial degree. So from that business, we ended up growing. I've been involved in and owned 17 businesses, going from screen printing and embroidery all the way up to com computer VAR. And today, fast forward to a few different points. I talk, uh, taught at NYU for 12 years, a uh, course on new product and service development, another one on executive strategy. Wrote the book, took 12 years to write, 14 complete revisions. It is the first and only, as far as I know that I've seen, maybe someone can prove differently, book that covers the entire world. 52 countries, 400 examples. So to give you profit, non-profit, government, military, education, and it goes across all territories. So we're going to go from Cartagena, Colombia, all the way to St. Petersburg, down to Hong Kong, to give you texture, feeling, and emotional connection in different layers of where you would exist in the world. And today, going all the way to today in the ecosystem that you brought up, uh, we, Jay and I, uh, were co-founders of this business. Jay and I met in San Francisco. We were both work in San Francisco at a, a mistake of a, a meeting. Someone invited me to a, a meeting to prove that they weren't doing it well. And I didn't know this. We were set up. And they weren't doing the meeting as well as they should. And I was pushing back. And then Jay and I connected. He's brilliant. He's a computational social scientist, artificial intelligence. Uh, he has a whole different life structure being a South African as from my world and where I came from and where I've worked. And we ended up clicking it off. And so I work in New York, Hong Kong, and San Francisco almost every month. I travel between them and anywhere else in the world. We're in beautiful Cape Town right now. And uh, our deaf team is here in Cape Town, and we've got an amazing group of individuals who can do things beyond what you'd call possible. That's I don't know if I did that well. No, that was amazing. Thank you. I know. I don't know which question to ask next. But Any question, I'm here so for you. <laughs> um, I think one of the most interesting things about Paid to Think is the idea of redefining the future. And you look at 12 different aspects, right? You are fast. Wow, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, because creativity comes through quite a bit, mm -hmm. I was wondering, being here at the AI Expo, how much creativity have you seen? Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty honest when it comes to these type yeah. of questions. I, I, we're not. A, there's a saying that we need to be transparent. No one's completely transparent. We talk about organizations being transparent. And I, I don't like that phrase because being transparent means you show, show everything. So if I walked into a, a meeting and someone next to me had a shirt I don't like, would I say to them, that's a horrible shirt, or they, they don't smell right? Do I say, do you smell? We're not completely, we're transparent to the point in which we are, can be. So I'm going to be as transparent as I can. I've spent the majority of my time at our booth. We have been inundated by questions because no one's doing what we're doing. That's not to say that other people in the world aren't doing it, but no one here is. We, uh, to give you a little sense of who we are, in the scope of a attract, I'll go do it for the camera, but I know yeah, there's a yeah. camera there, attract, secure, maintain. And this is one of the models that I've simplified where we work, is, uh, where the world works. We try to attract customers in different ways. So if we were a retail establishment, we would attract somebody by our signage, by our word of mouth, by our advertising, by our social media, we attract them. Then there's the secure element. Securing is we got them into the store, we've shown the products, we've had the pieces, and then we want to get them to do the transaction. If they don't buy, meaning you've been to a shop, you've seen a queue, you've dropped your bag and left. Yeah. So you did not secure them. There are people who are working on attraction in AI where what they do is they automate the sales process. So a salesperson doesn't follow up with the system well. It'll remind them when to do in the AI space. The securing, we have FinTech, who's really trying to automate that process. So if you've ever done an Uber car, and I hate to use Uber as an example, but it's very simple. 
You do not pay like the old days. You don't hand cash. You, you give them your information before you get there and the transaction's done, you get an email receipt. So that's taking the friction out of the system, making it easier for us to work. The next part is maintaining. And that's where a lot of organizations fall off. We, get, we do all this work to get a customer. We, it's costly, we send people on trips, we create advertising, we are engaging with them, we get them, and then we go on to the next. So if we get, let's say in the financial sector, a customer, there's a 430 US dollar or whatever translation, depending on the institution, to get them in, and then they do nothing with them. They don't engage with them, they send them a few coupons, they say now use our credit card, but they haven't engaged them. So what we work on a sliver of that in our AI, we're focusing on retention. Now, so what does that, why is that different? We tie in what's called computational social science. So if we talk about social science, it is the interaction between the two of us. If I wanted to know about you as a social scientist, I might do a survey, I might watch you work, I can do all sorts of things. But Monitor my shopping. Minus your shopping, I can see some of these things. The challenge is, I can only see I'm not gonna tell you what's inside my head. And if I have 50 people, how do I determine how all of those correlate? Not easy. But if we do computational social science, this is where it becomes exciting. I don't want to even see any of that. I don't want to watch you shop. I don't want to see you shop. I don't want to ask you questions. I don't, we take the survey out of the survey. We don't want to know anything. What I want to do mm -hmm. is see your breadcrumbs like the gingerbread story. Okay. Uh, uh, what's the name of the story? Hansel and Gretel. Hansel and Gretel. I want to see your transactional history. I want to know what time you bought it, when you bought it, how often yeah. you bought it. You buy petrol. You buy it every Sunday. You buy it for a series of time. Now that's going to give me data. That's what a data scientist would say. Oh, look at the trends. Yeah. But now if we put an emotional level over it, the sentiment of your buying, the reason behind why you're buying. Maybe you have a, a job that takes you far away and only Saturdays or Sundays are the time you have that. What if you stop buying on Sunday? What if you stop buying on Sunday? We don't know what's happening. So if we were to take a look, for example, at the banking sector, if the bank's profile, if the banking profile is we want to make money from our customers, and they have a loan due, when do they tell you that the loan is due? Take a guess. End of the month when you get paid? After it's due, because they want to collect your late payments. Uh, I'm gonna remind you, you missed your payment. A little bit. A little bit, I'm gonna tell you after. But if health and well-being is important to you, such as some banks in town have uh, understood that discovery is one of those great, they want you to be healthy and mm -hmm. mentally healthy, physically healthy, when are they gonna tell you that it's due? Before. Before. Mm. Now here's a big question. What if I tell you before and you still don't pay it? Well, I should probably pay late fees, right? Yes, but there's an, uh, something going on and what we can do is tell you why. How, where the sentiment comes in, what's going on in their lives. And we could tell you what's happening three months earlier. Mm. So you don't always want to ask people why they're having challenges with the bank. You have to find out who's not at the bank anymore. Stop using them, but that's too late. So we can take a product offering and find opportunities within the data that you wouldn't see otherwise. And we can tell you the profile of the individual and what they're thinking and how they're thinking and, and how we can reinforce that and we can give you solutions. We can then take that, that's one of our services called CPR, it's a, um, a pulse. We're getting your pulse, you as a person. How are you thinking? And then we can jump to another level. There are other people like you. Other people who are similar to you we can put that in a data set and now we can influence groups. So let me give you an example. Let's say you have a, a small car and you have a low income and I can influence you to have better behavior by giving you a, uh, a hundred grand coupon. It'd be valuable to you. But if you have a Mercedes 500 and you have one of these homes up here that are worth 20 million US and I offer you a coupon for a hundred grand, will you use that? So I need data sets that the influence of the behavior. And then we also track the time it takes for that message to get to you. So we can shorten it and modify it and play with it. So it's very bespoke tailoring, right? Uh, Sounds quite... It's a combination. What we do is we identify what the, that uh, the profiles are. 
We then write the math for it and we create algorithms for you. But then we give it to the company and their data scientists can play with it. And they can use it over and over again. People in general, when you think of, we'll have a retention program. Reality is retention is every day. Yes. So if we give you the tool and every day you can do it and every month you could do it, you have that algorithm. But then what we can do is create another algorithm because you have a different question and another one of its different questions. So it is bespoke. However, once you have it, we have a platform you're working off of. And those could be automated because if someone else comes to us and says, I would like to do something similar, we can pull day, um, programming and create something that would be close and newer. And as we move through time, we'll create, oh, I'll select A, B, and C and be able to do that. And ecosystem AI, what verticals have you guys been working in? Uh, our primary verticals are banking, insurance, and in telco. Yet we can and do work in retail. Uh, people are asking us for private label. So let's say there, there are some companies here who've come up to us and said, we service customers, but we can't do that. And we can do a white label for them or work directly with them. There's a company here, they have a thousand employees and they say, we do consulting work. Can you be our data group? Because no one's delivering what you deliver. What you need. Uh, what, the, what we deliver. So Jay just gave his the presentation for us and I was told, packed room, new questions, new solutions that people aren't, they haven't thought about. That's incredible. So what was Jay's talk on? Uh, I would let, r r r let Jay talk okay. about that. We'll bring Jay in. What I'm giving you is, because he's a data scientist and his, oh. uh, his solutions, I don't want to talk about stacks and full st uh, algorithms and development. He's the type of guy, which I love him to death, he doesn't read books, nonfiction or fiction books, mm -hmm. He primarily reads academic papers. Yeah. Now me, I don't know if I can do that. So <laughs> he's, he's so intense and he knows this space so well that we work together well in the way in which we service. Yeah, so two hubs. Two I, I, I work with the CEOs, Maersk, Dole, Tektronix, Infosys, Wipro, Illinois Toolworks. I just worked with Ferrari out in, on, uh, in New Zealand. We work at different spaces within the category, but we look at the world differently. So I'll give you an example. A guy walks up to me today, and, he, and we're talking, and he says, we work with call centers, and one of our call centers is growing. And I said, oh, then they're having challenges. And he looks at me, and I said, a call center should never grow. If you do everything well, no one calls you. Think about it. When everything's working well, no one calls you. So when someone's proud that their call center is growing, they actually have it wrong. Now, another company, a biking company, came up, or a... a a device company, and I asked the different question than Jay would ask. Jay's question was, what are you doing with the data? Because he's a data guy. Mm -hmm. And they talked about real complicated data components, and he was able to give completely different solutions than I would have given. So our synergy and the ideas that our team can create are completely diverse. Because I've, I don't know how many Jay's worked in, but I've worked in 300 different industries. And that gives me perspective. And I, I've worked in Bangladesh and Sri Lanka and Japan, and I've worked at have a place in Hong Kong, but I've also worked in St. Petersburg and, and in Africa in parts of Africa. So the perspectives are different. That's amazing. So it's it's cross platform, it's cross industry, it's cross country, and, and that's an amazing offering to bring into any company. It's funny that you say it that way, and I and I and I know people are watching this, so I, I will turn to the page. I think I could find it very quickly, but one of the things that I had come up with when I wrote the book in Enterprise Thinking, and it's in this page coming up, is the seven crosses. Cross-functional, cross-level, cross-industry, cross-sector, cross-culture, cross-time, cross-life. When Paid to Think was written, it was to cover profit, nonprofit, government, military, and education. It was designed to apply to any different type of environment. So for example, we don't use the word company in the book. Most books use the word company. I've never seen a book that's used as this. We use the word organization. Why? Because it's across so many different spaces. A little Very different. Different. Close. Try okay. it a little bit more. Think again. <laughs> Why would it, we use the word organization? Because it's organizing of people. If you work for government, yeah. what do you work for? A company? Yeah. No. What do you work for? I don't think there is an organization. An organization. If you work for a nonprofit. Organization. If you work for education. Organization. Military. Organization. If you work for a profit. 
organization. And a company. So if someone's reading this and they hear company, 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 and they are on the other four sectors, they will feel something's wrong. They have to translate. Yeah. We Doesn't use the word organization sense. so that everybody's inclusive and they go across all mm -hmm. seven crosses. So then how does anyone get hold of you? How do we get hold of Ecosystems AI? Um, Ecosystem.ai website. Website, website, and you okay. can go to david at ecosystem.ai. Perfect. And then you can send an email to me. I'd and love to respond. The book? The book is on Amazon. Amazon, so and you can order it in. And you can order it in, and it's digital. There's a, there is an audio. I did not do it. I wish I did, but I didn't. It's 32 or 36 hours long, but it has no, a lot of content. That's it's it, it's a tome. There's a lot in there, and we've got an 86% five-star rating on Amazon for a book that's this size. Awesome. Thank you so much, and thank you for spending time with us. Oh, I'm yeah. my pleasure. Thank you.